All right, folks. So I'm going to walk you back through what we did in class today with a couple additional explanations, just so you can see what we did um, and have a record of, of uh, the different things we calculated and what we actually typed in the command window. So the first thing that we always want to do is we want to navigate to the folder with our data. The way that we do that is this little folder that looks like it's opening right by this command line. Um, so you can click on that. And then my data was on the desktop. You always want to make sure you know where your data is. Go to the desktop. There's my CE352 folder and my exercise for class. Um, you have six different files in here. MAT files are MATLAB files. They show up as something that MATLAB recognizes, right? You have these little um, matrices shown on the left-hand side. Um, and then we also have CSV files, which is essentially just an Excel format of file. Um, we can use MATLAB as a calculator. So this is something we did first, 45 plus 32. Enter gives you a value of 77. That also appears over in the workspace called ANS for answer 77. If I typed in a new thing, 34 plus 11, it would update that. If I wanted to save those calculations, I can give that variable a name called calc and say 45 or excuse me, 34 plus 11. And that will now save that as calc. So if I did another computation, 10 plus 20, answer will update, but my answer is already saved from the previous calculation and saved as calc. Um, the workspace is always going to show you what's going on. You can double click on those different um, variables over there, and they will appear here and show you what is in them, which can sometimes be really helpful. And I always say, take a look at your variables before you start messing with them. So I'm going to type CLC here, and that clears the command window. Um, the other thing that we did is we loaded a new data set, the CSV file. So um, to do that, we're going to type, we're going to click on import data and you're going to select your file. You're going to say open, and it's going to open a new file. And you might not be able to see this right now, but that's okay. When that opens, you're going to go to output type. You're going to select column vectors, and then you are going to click on the green check mark to import the selection. And what should appear is a list of values like you can see over here on the right hand side of the screen in workspace. You've got DA for drainage area, date, day, gauge number that the USGS uses to indicate what each gauge is, month, Q and CFS, and the year. Um, the other thing we're going to do today, so from, from the CSV file we get streamflow, and from the um, PPT file we get precipitation. Anytime you have something over here in your workspace, you can double click on it. So let's look at PPT. We got years up along the top, got years up along the top and um, the yearly total for precipitation in centimeters. Um, let's look at QCFS. Uh, these are both 30 year data sets. The precipitation data is annual. QCFS, there's a lot of values. So if that's the same data for the same 30 year period, you could probably guess that that is a daily estimate of stream flow. So one thing that we did in class is we plotted that. So we're going to type plot. We're going to say plot date on the x-axis. And let's open up date and look at it. Look at states, as you would expect. And it has a specific variable type called date time. I'm going to close that again. Say plot date. And I'm going to say plot QCFS. And you will get a pop-up window that um, gives you a figure that shows stream flow over that full 30 year period. Um, but we actually wanna do some calculations. So we wanna calculate the runoff ratio, which is essentially the sum of stream flow over a 30 year period divided by the sum of precipitation over a 30 year period. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to some are precipitation, or excuse me, some are stream flow. We're going to call this a new variable called Qtote. What this means, if we're typing this on the left-hand side, is it will then appear in the workspace. 
um, we are going to say, take QCFS, which is a list of daily stream flow values. We're going to say, multiply that by that conversion factor that everybody identified, which is 0 0.944628, 0 0.944628. And we need to divide that by our drainage area in miles squared. And what you'll notice is what we type over here needs to match exactly what is shown in the workspace. If you're ever needing to do that more easily, so I'm gonna get rid of drainage area over here, I can click on that variable, drag it over, and look, there's the name perfectly ready to go. So if I were to type this in, what I get is a really big matrix. And that's not what I want. Look, Qtote is a massive matrix of data. We don't want that. We want to sum this. We want to sum these values. So we're going to type sum that whole thing. Um, and what's messing with us is DA or drainage area. Let's look at that. It is the same value repeated over and over again. So we want to just grab the one cell, the first cell. So I'm going to do something where I tell it to call just the first row and first column value. One comma one, right next to my drainage area. That says, pick out the first row, pick out the first column. Now I'm gonna press enter. And all of a sudden I have a single value for Q total, which is what I want. Shown in scientific notation, which is a little annoying, but that's okay. Um, we're going to do the same thing for p-tote. We want to get all of the precipitation values together. Um, p-tote is in centimeters, and q-tote, our goal was to get that into millimeters, so we do need to do some conversion, but let's look at p precipitation again. Precipitation is in the second row, and it's all of the columns. We want to sum all of those things. So we're going to say sum all those things, we're going to say sum PPT, which is the name of our variable we're calling. We want to tell it to grab the second row and all of the columns. So we're going to say grab the second row, row number two, comma, all of the columns. We can say by just using a colon. And we add that little semicolon at the end to have it not print the output to the command window. So I'm going to press enter. Now we get a value for p-tote. Now what if I didn't include that semicolon and I just said enter? It just appears there. It's not a big deal. Um, sometimes we'll be working with really big data sets, and so we don't want the whole thing to print out. Um, but for now, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to suppress that again. And finally, we want to calculate our runoff ratio, which is going to be equal to q-tote divided by p-tote. Forgot to do one thing here. I forgot to change p-tote from uh, centimeters to millimeters. So I'm gonna just multiply p-tote by 10. And if you're ever worried about order of operations, just like you'd be worried about on your calculators, you can always add parentheses. We're gonna say enter. And all of a sudden we get runoff ratio, a single value, way to go. Um, the thing that I do want you to practice, so we plotted the entire time series um, of stream flow. Something I'm going to ask you to do this next um, homework assignment is I'm going to ask you to plot just um, individual years. So if I wanted to do that, we're going to do our plot function again. I'm going to say plot date versus QCFS. And to plot just the first 365 days, let's look at this. So we got rows, many numbers, and we got one column. So our format for this is always rows, comma, columns. And I'm just going to type that in as placeholder. In the rows, we want to just plot the first 365 days. So we're going to say, take the value in row one all the way to the value in row 365. We don't have multiple columns. We just have one. So we're going to type in one right there. And that is going to give us an error. Oh no, it's saying the vectors must be the same length. Why is that? That's because we're trying to plot 
all of date, which is 10,958 values versus just the first 365 values. So we have to tell date again, just like with Q, we only want to plot the first 365 values. So you can do that, press enter, and you get a hydrograph for um, January 1st through December 31st. Um, the challenge in your homework is I want you to plot this for the water year. This is this is not a water year, January 1 to January 1. Um, so that is going to be one of your challenges on your homework. Remember, in the date vector, you're going to be able to find October 1st. You can scroll down and find what number it begins on. And you can find September 30th of the next year. And those are going to become the, the row values that you want to grab and to eventually plot. All right. Good job, everybody. Way to go.